I have to spend money like crazy. And one way of gauging whether or not you're on program is whether you're spending money fast enough. If you're not spending money fast enough, you know there's going to be a problem. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment in terms of program. It's just going to be like order that, order that, order that. You're ordering everything at once. Let's, let's go up this way and then we'll walk around that yeah way. so how's it been then slower than i would like but but really well i mean it's it's all going according to in terms of the actual what we're creating unless we have six of the nine sold and some of those people are now wanting to make small minor changes inside can slow things down a little bit like on plot eight they wanted to make a change that we needed a non-material amendment on but it's pretty minor um but that had to go back to sips um, for those minor modifications. So that just adds time when it's just going back and forth like that. You've got plot three, you've got plot four, and you've got plot five, um, which they look like they're just huge out of the ground sort of bunkers, but actually the ground still has to slope up to it. And then there's a, there's a retaining wall, which basically goes in between each plot which retains a lot of ground behind it that gets leveled off and that becomes the gardens for each plot uh, so the gardens are actually to the side of the plot so then you've got this basically this long effectively wall going all the way along here uh, but the ground is probably brought up another uh, meter probably and then it'll just slope down uh, to the back so it looks it's a little bit hard to kind of fathom what exactly is going on here at the moment for a lot of people but there's a hell of a lot of work in these basements. These are far more engineered than we would have back in the States. I'm not even sure we put, I don't think we put any steel in some of it in, in, a, in our standard basement. Equally, it's been a long time since I've lived there, so I don't know whether those have moved on, but all I know is my dad likes to tell me that they would, he would have done these three in about, you know, four weeks, which is super helpful. Um, <laughs> and then I have to tell him, well, you know, it's just not what it, I don't know what you're doing over there, but you know, look at it. It take it just takes time. Okay. So what's the process here? So they form the slab first, and a kick, what they call a kicker, which is that little sort of upstand, um, and that's so that then when they put the forms on it, it, they have something to clamp the forms onto on either side. If we go down to this wind up, but basically that, that form gets pushed up against that kicker, which is that little upstand. Again, my dad would say, oh, we pour, we pour the whole thing in once. Why? I don't know why you're not doing that. Well, um, I can't tell these guys what to do necessarily, but we've done this in three. And that was, uh, they, were con they were concerned about pouring too much at once. Some of the concrete starts to go off before they poured the whole thing. And you don't get this uh, adhesion. And then we also, we needed to pour some under the windows. Um, and, and these guys are just overly cautious, I think, just about making sure that it's right, really, which is fine by me because, you know, you want the basements not to leak and to be really robust. Um, they're not done very often over here, are they? So um, the last thing I want to be doing is going back to somebody's leaky basement. But I don't think these will leak in the first place, but then they have, they have, if we go up this way, I'll show you. Basically, once they strip this tomorrow, they will, they will be able to start the damp proofing and so there's an external damp proofing layer and then there's a uh, there's an internal perimeter drain and then there are two sump pumps where the perimeter drain goes into so and there's an internal membrane as well so basically they won't leak but even if they do leak it goes into the sump and there's a primary sump and a secondary pump a sump in case that fails i mean it's crazy but um and you can see they've, they've had to, they, did, they did a little bit of repair patch, but you won't see any of that. And that's because we had a little bit of honeycombing 
because it was kind of difficult um, with all the steel that's in there to get the pokers down all the way down to, to, to uh, basically vibrate it. They tried a slightly different thing on this next pour, which I think will work a little bit better, but um, I mean, it would be a problem, obviously, if that honeycombing went all the way through, but it was just a bit of surface imperfection, basically. So now we, we have some stepped footings that come up here, and the rest of it is, so if you can imagine, the top of that just runs all the way across here. So that's basically where the, where that plinth, if you run a line through, that's where that plinth finishes. Yeah, so that's those three, which is, uh, the other thing is, of course, you can only pour so many times just because of the weather and having to get a pump and scheduling concrete. All of those things have been a little bit more difficult. You might book concrete in for Friday and if it's raining, everybody cancels their concrete. <laughs> And the one decent day you have, everybody wants to concrete. So it's really a, a thing to to organize and, and to keep your program up. Because you might only have, I mean, even in summer, you know, you might only have one day that you can pour. Whereas really what you want to be doing is, you know, uh, pouring, stripping that the next day, setting it up the next day, pouring sort of every three days. Uh, equally, if they got tons of forms, they could do that as well, but that would be very expensive as well. So. Yeah, so that, that bit's taking longer than I would have liked, but that should be, I reckon we've got a couple of months um, to get all of those uh, completed. And then we're obviously cracking on with the other units up here. Plot 8 is sold now. Uh, they're just doing the drains in there. The steel is being erected in here on the 10th of September. And then the SIPs will be installed early November. Yeah, so basically the reason this, this floor isn't in yet is because is we have to set the, all the steels in first. And then we have to concrete the steels in, then we can finish concreting the floor. The scaffolding will go up the week after the steels go in, and then the sips. So, plot nine, uh, a lot of the internal uh, framing is done. I think they've got about another week on that. They're putting the windows in now. And now that we've sorted out the whole roof situation, we could, we'll strip that roof and put on the, the proper uh, final membrane, which is a Tyvek product called uh, Tyvek Metal, um, which is specifically for standing seam roofs. Uh, and um, we'll see if we will have a look at how far they've gotten on the roof over there. It's pretty quick stuff, really. So I think between the Velixes and the roof, it's going to take them three to four weeks. And the Velixes are quite complex because of the, um, you'll see there's some triple Velixes. They're very big Velixes. So Velux's. What do you call them over here? You call them Velux's, right. You call them Velux, and yet the windows are Velfac, the, and they're the sister company to each other. In, in the States, we call them Velux's, which is like Velfac, isn't it? Yeah. So, I'm guessing, I'm guessing you guys are wrong. Then. We're probably wrong, yeah. So, should we, do you want to walk into nine, or do you want to... Yeah, show us around, I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Again, this one should go quite a bit, quite a bit uh, quicker and smoother, just because we know we've done stuff on that one already. So things that we fixed or, or corrected, shall I say, that we didn't have to go back and correct a second time was lifting these heads. Uh, we know what we're doing with the stairs. It's really loud, isn't it? Uh, we know what we're doing with the staircases. So th is this very similar to next door, is it? Yeah, pretty similar, yeah. Um, just getting ready to put one of the windows in, so they've got these little window brackets. These suckers are super heavy because of the triple glaze. The fitters are from a company called Foster Construction, and we have probably their best fitter. So yeah, according to him, it's going smoothly on the windows. So most of the framing, like I say, is done down here. We're just trying to get it weather tight. They're doing the, they're actually preparing the flat roof here, is what they're doing. Here I'm scaring on there. They're starting the other staircase in here. This is the brackets for the windows. Um, we effectively have those designed uh, and we either shortened or lengthened some of them just to work a little bit better based on what, uh, what we found worked on plot seven. Um, that's something that we, because we uh, could work it in 
um, at the design stage instead of last time where we had to basically go back in and put in some structural elements to open up two um, windows on the side, we were also able to put in this huge window in the center, which the buyer may decide to glaze or they may decide to leave open, depending on how they're gonna use the room. We'll go out this way. What else? What else? Um, How's the barn coming along? Yeah, we hadn't done much with that because we're still trying to figure out how how best to do it without it falling down. But the the rest of it, plot two is is, is going well. And um, but again, I'm, we've been struggling to get the windows ordered on that, and the window all the windows are on a twelve week order. So it's three months before you can get some windows, which means you can only do so much inside. I mean, twelve weeks to get windows. That that's kind of the I love these windows, but it it's a lot. It, you know, it's it's a long time. <laughs> so basically what we have to do for the remaining units is basically we're going to be ordering plot eight now. You know, there's not even a building there. We're going to be ordering all the other ones in quick, quick succession uh, as well. I have to spend money like crazy. I mean, the, the funny thing is about like, I don't know if it's about all uh, other types of businesses as well, but certainly in development is that you know, one way of gauging whether or not you're on program is whether you're spending money fast enough. If you're not spending money fast enough, you know there's going to be a problem. And that's where we're at at the moment in terms of program. And that's why pretty soon, pretty soon come, come the beginning of October, it's just going to be like, order that, order that, order that. You're ordering everything at once. Um, and um, we'll see how, we'll see how that affects logistics on site. That could be pretty interesting. Tim might be pissed off at me because he's, He's got 20, well not 20, but he's got five houses, windows, you know, arriving all around the same time. But uh, but hopefully by that time, you know, we'll be further back for, on the site. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, are we going inside this one? Yeah, and then take maybe, us inside. Um, so when it's raining, do you bring everything inside? Yeah, yeah. Unless it was kind of, you know, if it's a little bit hit and miss or it's just spitting, it's not a, not a huge problem to carry on outside, but um, that's another thing is just, you know, you have a, you have a workforce and you, you know, some people say, well, just get more and more people in and just, you know, just flood it with people so you can get more work done. But then if it rains, all of a sudden you have half the work that you did have because half of it's outside and all of a sudden what are you going to do with all these other people? Or, you know, and you ultimately you could get completely caught up with everything inside and then you have nothing for anybody to do. Um, when the weather's not great. So that also takes quite a bit of managing. So um, in terms of putting your team together, have you got guys here multi-skilled? Well, the joiners, so they're really, you know, uh, joiners by trade, but they're doing the roofing because it's many of the same skills. Um, I'm not even sure that really it's not more geared towards joiners than standard roofers for this type of material. So they'll do that, they'll do everything internally, externally, they'll do all the cladding. This is the... That's the... <laughs> that's the Siberian Larch. Um, is that for the outside or the inside? This is for the outside. You don't have to treat it or anything, but the layman might look at it and think, oh, that's just been a softwood. We compare it with softwood. You see how this is like got effectively a couple of rings of growth. Yeah, it's got a few, and look how tight that is. That's how slowly this material has grown. Obviously, that adds to the look of it as well. You know, this would not be an attractive product to put externally, and it would rot within a very short period of time. This larch it typically could last a hundred years. I think they they say sixty because obviously nobody's going to say. You know, it'll definitely last 100 years, but it'll last a very long time. Um, and that tight green gives it a, a different look. It, it, it ultimately will turn kind of a light gray. Right. Uh, let's go upstairs over here, and I'll show you upstairs in the Bellex's b -lexes. So these are these triple windows. This is, it's a full v -lux product. Originally, we looked at whether or not this piece was going to be Belfac. And those were going to be Velux, but in the end, um, there was no way. There wasn't a, a real uh, successful way of joining those three components. So th th there was a lot of toing froing from. Obviously, they're they're companies that work together, 
um, but they really can uh, uh, figure a way to um, combine VELFAC and VLUX. So that's hints why all three are now in VLUX. Um, Is this a bedroom then? Yeah, it's a bedroom. Um, the, that's not the means of escaping the bedroom because there's two windows, uh, one in the dressing room and one in the ensuite. So, but it, those tilt in, and the other ones just are on center pivots. Um, so it's a nice little, uh, a nice little feature in these rooms. Basically, of these providing really nice views. Even this one is effectively looking straight down the road, so there's, it's not looking at any other houses or anything. It's a little bit hard to tell at the moment, but it allows a lot of light in. So I think they turned out nice, especially when, obviously, when we get rid of the um, the scaffolding, it's going to make a huge difference. So how's no. the building been going then with the SIPs? Has it been as smooth as you hoped it would be? Nothing is quite as precise as you think it is, particularly in construction. Um, and, and I found that about SIPs, and I think even the, the installers and everybody would say that look, you know, they, have to, they have to make some adjustments on site and that kind of stuff. But that's okay because obviously it, there is the ability to do that. If you couldn't do that, that would be a problem. Um, so, well, for example, I'll, I'll sh basically this header, they've made a mistake. Uh, in this load-bearing wall in terms of it forgotten that the height was going up 75 mil because of the screen, the insulation, everything. But they were able to come in here and just put it, just lift the header up. So they were able to adjust it. Um, same with, uh, there's one in here where the loading was a bit, was a bit more. So they actually just suck a piece of steel in there instead. Um, so, you know, they, they find a solution that works to correct something and, you know, it's fine. This is the product. This is Katnik SSR2, made by Tata Steel. So there's some big names behind it. Um, but again, this, this, this type of roof should last 60 years, I think is what they say. Um, and again, that's probably, I mean, I don't know. I've seen crappy barns that, you know, have old tin sheds that have been there for 100 years. So you know, there's nothing really to go wrong with the product in the first place. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a robust material, um, be very difficult to puncture, break, you know, it's not like slates. So like, uh, um, the barns, which obviously have to be done in, in the, the blue slate. You now, as soon as somebody walks on that, you know, you, you have the chances you might, uh, snap a slate, that slide, you don't notice it, that slides down later and obviously allows a little place for water to ingress. I mean, equally, it should last a long time, but there's just a lot more to go wrong with it, really. I mean, again, um, you get a little bit of water in a tiny crack in a slate, and then when it freezes, it expands, and that also causes the uh, slate to crack and break and or allow water in inside. So I think you'll see more of this product. And the, the nice thing about Katnik and this SSR2 product is that they've actually come up with a way just to make it a lot easier to install. So last time we were here, the SIPs roofs were being put on. Yeah. So what's the process from then? What, what's happened well, since they, then? Well, they cover it with essentially that, that um, cheap membrane that you see over there. And I say cheap, it's just an inexpensive membrane that you would use for any kind of slate roof. That kind of provides the protection that it needs at the moment, um, but it's open to the elements. It doesn't matter if it gets ripped and you know, if we have to patch it up and all that kind of stuff. We then strip that off when we're ready and we apply this stuff here, which if you come around here, this has got this rough kind of, it's Velcro. like a honeycomb plastic material. And it's got all, so it's got all these little tiny holes in it. And what that does is um, it allows, um, well, supposedly <laughs> the idea is that uh, any vapor comes through and then can can basically this honeycomb stuff holds the metal sheet off of the bottom layer allowing any moisture to come down and it basically comes down on the top of this and just drips off into the gutter it's kind it's not the easiest stuff to use it's crazy expensive so like 
if that's you know 500 pounds this is like 2500 pounds um, so really good stuff looks like they've got one velux left to do which is here these are the these are the eve plates that go on and basically if you remember we've got a gutter that pops up underneath here like this so we'll slide that underneath there the slat and the, this uh, the uh, Siberian larch comes up past it, so you don't see the gutters, you don't see the, st the uh, downpipes. The downpipes are basically hidden behind here, um, which I think is going to make for a really slick looking, you know, minimal fenestration externally. <laughs> this isn't finished. You're all right. You're all right. Is it that bad? <laughs> it's not great. Jesus. You can't go anywhere now. You know, you're good. Is it really that bad? So basically this isn't finished because all this has to be trimmed back and dressed. Uh, this has got a this has got a gutter here. You see that goes that's got a, that that will fall into our gutter, which is coming across here. Uh, and then what we've decided to do is actually to treat this kind of like a window. So this will have a, a copper band which is like a an expandable foam weatherproofing material that'll be applied into that. Um, and then we'll also have the Siberian large trim like we did on the windows as well. Just demonstrate that gutter thing again. It comes down some in maybe some internal channels, but it ends up in this gutter here. And then if you, and it basically does that. And... So that then attaches to your gutter that's hidden behind the large. No, this, this gets cut back and kind of this gets finished like this and gets cut back to there yeah. so you can imagine a line going straight across there yeah. and that falls into the gutter that's here so it falls into our regular gutter another reason why we were kind of slow to figure out exactly what we were doing on the Veluxes is because we didn't this is a, a flashing kit that's primarily used for um, like pan tiles because it, it you can move it you know you can you can form it around things Velix has got a, a, another system but it just doesn't quite it's not quite there when it comes to standing seam so we've had to use this which I don't think is as, as an attractive uh, method and we'll, I'll show you when we go around to the other side but um, in fact we'll go we'll go on that we'll go that way now and okay. you want me to hold your hand <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's... It wobbles. <laughs> yeah. If you want to stop here, I'll just show you a little something. I want to just show you this, really, but this is basically a little cover piece. They've still got to crimp this bottom edge, but basically then our Siberian larch is going to come up past that as well. So from the side, you don't see any of the this um, verge flashing which is also, I think, a nice little detail. So you can see, basically, um, this, this just has to basically form around the standing seam. And it's not, it's not great, but it's what we've got at the moment that works better than the other method. Velux and Katnik have tried really hard to kind of work something out that it does work, but I think it's something that they'll probably will continue to, to work on and adapt, particularly as more people start to use this product. Um, How come this is still so dusty? Didn't it rain this Yeah, we all put on this morning. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah. right, okay. I'm going from it, like... Is that, does, does that come off? I mean, is that... What's the best way to, to get it off, you think? Scratch it off. Let me just ask you about one thing here. Which is helpful, but one guy's off, off sick, not COVID. Um, and... Um, um, so just that, get that disclaimer in yeah, there. Just saying. <laughs> it's got the shits. No, um, 